Welcome back. Quick reminder, Minter. Next lecture, your Minter. Uh, we do not have a meeting in Zoom. Basically, what you're going to do is go directly to your browser and start with your exam. Important, your exam during the lecture time only. Starting 10.30, you have 60 minutes for the exam and more or less 15 minutes for the configuration. 75 minutes total. Uh, 11.45, you should be out. Hopefully, everything fine. Uh, two important things. Please complete the sample exam. Be sure that your computer, your system, whatever, is working with the lockdown browser. There is a link on Canvas. The link is sample exam, please go and complete that. It's not an exam, it's just one question. And the question is something like, how are you? Or something like that. It do not impact your grade at all. And you can take that one, the sample one, as many times as you want. So it's only for testing your system. Do that as soon as possible so you are not testing your computer the day of the exam or minute before the exam you to find out that you cannot take the exam something important is going to ask you for a camera so be sure to the camera in your computer is working or get one tested uh, having this not hopefully there is not going to be any problem now we publish for you some instructions. Instructions like what I do if my exam fail during the exam. Uh, you need to contact a UIT. Uh, you do not remember your login or your password in order to enter uh, the EDU system. Uh, you are having problems connecting to Canvas. Uh, internet connection fail. I don't know, but any technical issue, you need to contact a UIT. Uh, there is nothing really that myself or the TAs can do. We do not have access to the servers. We cannot check your internet connection, anything like that. So read the instructions here. Uh, what we put there is the contact information of the people that you can contact or what to do. Uh, there is usually a chat or a phone number or something that you can quickly contact the people and they are going to help you to review your situation. Uh, if they ask you to contact us after you have an issue, they are going to give you a ticket, a ticket number. Be sure to have that before contact us. But hopefully you do not need to do so. So the sample exam, read the instructions so you know what to do just in case something happened. And next lecture, no meeting in Zoom, go directly to the lockdown browser, complete your exam. The content of the exam, we already reviewed that in the previous lecture. I published the videos. You can check the video with the review and the videos of all the previous lectures. The same for the slides. At least review the slides. All the programs that we have reviewed during the lecture time, all the examples, your previous quizzes, your homeworks, be sure that you can solve similar problems. Say so. Next step, today we start with a new programming language. I want to start with C++. Uh, we already talked about this. C++ is not included in your exam. So this is the first topic for your final exam. So C++, what are we going to do? Three main things. And hopefully I can cover this in four lectures or less. But number one, we need to talk about concepts, as usual, introductions, uh, getting started. Hopefully I can do that today. Uh, I need to talk obviously about classes, they are back, but also about a new concept, a new idea, namespaces. Namespaces, you can think about them 
like the packages, the import that you're using Java, but they are not the same. We need to talk about it. We need to talk about public, private, and protected. They are back from Java. We need to talk about input output, how to print something on the screen and how to read something from the keyboard. We did that with Java, you know it. We did that with C, printf, scanf. Now we need to review exactly the same with C++, input and output, the standard. And we need to learn about a new operator. A new operator, I am giving you the name, scope resolution operator is a very long name. And is this guy, colon, colon, four dots, two columns together. This is a new operator and this one exists in C++. It's not from C, Java do not have this guy. We're going to be using this new operator, the scope resolution operator in C++ and we need to talk about him. Now, that is the new concepts, new things. Then second step, we need to talk again about memory management. We need to talk about pointers. And the only thing that I need to tell you, and we're going to review examples is, you know malloc and malloc have this free complement, right? Malloc is going to change the name. Malloc is going to become new. Yeah, like in Java. We're going to review examples. And free is going to become delete. So we need to review pointers again, but now instead of using malloc and free, now we need to work with new and delete and we need to review the parameters or the syntaxes for new and delete that are going to be what we use with pointers in C++. Talking about memory, talking about pointers. Well, I am sure that you remember constructors in Java. This method that is always called when you create an object. Well, now something that we're going to have in C++ is the other part, the structures. The structure, well, if the constructor is the first method that you call when you create an object, the destructor is going to be the last method that an object is going to execute before dying. The first method, the last method, the constructor, the destructor. Something that we're going to review is Usually, you are going to put the news in the constructor and it's going to be a good idea to put the deletes in the destructor, make the group. But we're going to talk about this and we're going to review examples probably next lecture or in the next one. Finally, the other thing that we need to review with C++ is obviously inheritance extends, implements. We need to see what happened with that in Java, from Java to C++. And connected with the idea of inheritance, something that was very, very important in Java was polymorphism, right? The parent, the child, and this idea that a child can take the place of the parent in any part of the program. We're going to review how this works for C++, in particular, Something that is going to happen is polymorphism is going to be connected not only with inheritance, but also with pointers. Pointers are going to be needed in order to implement polymorphism with C++. Well, step number one, and this is something that I am going to give you examples, but there is no extent or implement here. The inheritance here is going to look like you have a class, this is the parent, and then instead of a keyword, instead of extend or implement,
your class is going to look more like this. Public, class, whatever name you give to the class is the child class, colon, the name of the parent. Colon is going to become now our extent or implements. Because we're not using words, now we are using a symbol. The symbol can be the same for inheriting from a class or inheriting from an after a class, an interface. We are going to review this. So three things for lectures are we cover C++. Let's see. Step number one. C++, what you want is classes, right? Well, number one, you can put classes inside of a file. Your files now are not going to be .c. Your files now are going to be .cpp, C++. Inside of a file, Inside of a CPP, you can put as many classes as you want. There is not a rule about the file having the same name of the class. That is Java. In fact, here, what you do in order to create classes is more like the same that we did in C to create structs. Now the keyword is class. It have a name, open curly bracket, closing curly bracket, and yes, we need the semicolon. And this is my first class. Now, option number one, variables, the attributes. And also now with classes, methods. Your first class with one attribute and one method, just like in Java. Differences in terms of the syntaxes, this semicolon, and now the class, the name for the class is not the name for the file, it's not mandatory. Two different things. Moreover, something very, very important the main, the main method. Always, always, always is going to be outside of the classes. The main do not belong to any class. Think about it. All those programs that you did in Java in which you put the main inside of the class student or the main inside of the class homework or the main inside of the class professor or the main inside of the class whatever. Main was a method, an activity, a functionality for that class. And always the answer is no. The main is the main method. The main is the one that I need in order to start running my program. The only reason because you put the main inside of a class is because you need to put the main in some place. With C++, C++ is the main is only one method. The main do not belong to any class. The main should be outside of your classes. The main is used a method. And the main is not static, is not public. All of that public static is something that you put in Java to tell Java that that method was unique. Static, remember? A method that is not part of any object. A method that is just there inside of the class. You put that to make Java compile your program. But really the main is like this. Outside of the classes, can return an integer or be void. Main. And if I'm not going to use any parameter, empty. Main my class, done. Moreover, for the first time, we can have variables like this one that are global variables. What does it mean? 
those variables are not inside of any method, either they are inside of a class. For the first time, this one is an attribute, a variable in a class, and this one is a global variable, a variable that can be used by several methods in several classes, a global variable. In Java, the only way to have a global variable is to do in an attribute. Attributes and global variables, kind of the same thing with different names that we use there. Here, if we talk about a global variable, we are not talking about an attribute in a class. Two different things. You want a global variable? The global variable is outside of the methods, but also outside of the classes. Ah, you want a variable inside of the class. What you want is an attribute. Classes, global variables, methods. Now, you have the main that is a method outside of the classes. Can you have methods, other methods outside of the classes? And the answer is yes. Something that is very, very common. We talk about C, C++. C, C++, we usually use the object-oriented part of C++, but also we can use at the same time everything that we covered before with C, like these variables and methods that do not belong to classes. Variables and methods that are used functions. If we talk about concepts, this method here is a method because it's inside of a class. This main here is a function. It's not a method. Methods are inside of classes. This one, it's outside. No class there. That one is a function. We have functions and we have methods, different things. Global variables and attributes, different things. Step number one. So far, so good. Clear questions? Okay, moving forward. Public, private, and protected. You have the same keywords that you use in Java in C++. Well, in fact, it's the opposite. Java took this from C++. And only one small change. This is my class. And if you want to use things private, public, protected, what you do is you put the keyword and then you put colon. Just like in the switch cases, remember? Case, the value, colon. From this point down, every single variable that I put there is going to be private. I do not need to put private before every single variable that I create, like you do with Java. Or starting here, everything that I put there is going to be protected. Starting here, Everything that I put below, like methods, all of them are going to be public. So in C++, public, private, and protected is more like at the beginning of the paragraph, if you want to talk about that, instead of adding the keyword before every single sentence. So usually what you do is your methods, and they are below a public column. They do not have public each of the methods or the variables. You open private and then you put your variables. They do not have a private every single line. What happened in this example in which I never put anything public, private, or protected? I didn't use those modifiers. Variable is public, private, or protected. 
this method is public, private, or protected. Yeah. Do you remember C and these default things like integer be the type by default? Classes, public, private, and protected. If you do not put anything, there is a default. And the default is going to be more or less the same that in Java, this idea of a public, but public in the same folder, not outside. That is more or less the public in Java by default that is not the same public with the keyword. So similar idea, if you put nothing, they are public, at least for the same package, well, for the same namespace, we need to talk about it, public. So usually what you can do is option number one, you put your methods on the top and then you open private and your variables. You can do that, it can work. Usually we do not do that. Uh, you'd like in Java, something that we do is the variables go first, just because it's easy to read. And then in some point, we start with the methods. If we put the keyword private in some point, we need to change to something else. Otherwise, everything is going to be private. So public, private, and protected. Now, what do I need to do in order to create an object from this class? Very, very simple. Name of the class, name of the object. Is something missing there? You can be thinking what happened with the new. We do not need the new. Can we use the new? Yeah, we're going to review the new later. But this object is an object. Without the new, it's going to be an object and it's going to be created in the stack. When we use the new, the object is going to go to the heap. In Java, it is mandatory to use the new, yeah? Because Java put all the objects and all the arrays in the heap. Java do not allow you to put things in the stack, big things. The only thing that Java allows you to put in the stack is primitive data. Any other thing, arrays, objects, go to the heap. It's mandatory to use the new for them. In C, C++, we already reviewed this with arrays. You can create an array with block. You can also create an array use You do not need the new like in Java. The problem is that this array go to the stack, right? Similar idea here, that is an object. Without the new, it's an object, it's going to go to the stack. Now, moving forward, I mentioned this before. I have a class, my class, start here, finish here, semicolon. I need to remember the semicolon. Now, I can put another class. This is the name for my new class. Inheritance, extend, implement, That is the replacement for both extends and implements a column. And after the column, the name of the parent, something that we need to review. You can do inheritance, use like that or between the colon and the name of the parent there, you can put public, private or protected. We can use public, private or protected as modifiers for the variables and for the methods. 
But now also we can have inheritance public, inheritance private, and inheritance protected. What is the meaning of that? We need to review it. But my point here is inheritance can be any of those three types. What do you think happen if I use do this? The child extend the parent. What happens if I do not use anything there? The default. And which one is the default? Public. This line here is exactly the same that this line there. But if I change this one for protected or private, different story. Something that we need to review is what is the meaning of inheritance with modifiers, just giving you the advance. Next, private, my variable, done. Another class, whatever inside, one, two, three classes. And this is one file. And the name of the file can be whatever you want. And inside you have three classes in the same way that you can have three structs. Again, the name of the file is not the name of the class. Three classes in one file, totally fine. The main, I have three classes, but the main is outside of all of them. The main do not belong to any of the classes. And I want to create an object, name of the class, name of the object. And you can create three objects or an array of objects that we're going to play with that later from any of the classes. Easy. Now, you need to think about this. Uh, Java is totally object oriented. Why? Because in Java, nothing can happen without objects and therefore without classes. As we mentioned before, even the main is inside of a class. Anything, every single file is a match with a class. On the opposite side, C, no classes, uh, functions, variables. When you think about C++, you can think about a mixture of what we already review in C, functions, the main alone, the global variables, even the pointers and this idea of using the stack or the heap, all those concepts together with what you have in Java, but together with most of the things that you have in Java. There are some things that you have in Java that you are not going to have here, including the garbage collector. But most of the things that you have in Java with most of the things that we review with C, that is what we are going to have in C++, this mixture of two worlds, structural programming and object-oriented programming. Now, talking about that, Remember, methods, functions, uh, functions outside of the classes, methods inside of the classes. Remember that part. And the most important maybe, a key idea for the exam, not for this one, but for the final, when someone asks you for a global variable in Java, it's asking for an attribute. In C++, it's not an attribute. Attribute and global variable are not the same in C++. Remember that for your final exam. A global variable is outside of everything. It's really a global variable. An attribute is what you use to call a global variable in Java. In C++, you can have attributes and they are not global variables. Anyway, moving forward, a more complete example. Uh, let's see. Number one, libraries. 
what do you think is this library? Uh, do you remember include, right? Is our friend from C, include, like the import. Library, Angular Rackets, EO stream. This guy is going to be the replacement for Studio. Moreover, a quality something that you are going to notice in the libraries in C++. The libraries in C++ do not have the dot .h. Every single time that you have a program and you notice a library after an include, if that library have a dot .h, 99% of probability that is a C library. If that library do not have anything like this one, 99% of probability is a library with classes and objects. It's a C++ library. EO stream, the replacement of STDO. STDO, ah, that one was the one that gives us access to printf and scanf. Remember, well, which are going to be the replacement for printf and scanf? C out and C in. C out. C out. C in. In. Reading from the keyboard. Out. Sending to the screen. In Java, uh, do you remember system out print ln and hello plus x plus by? Do you remember the plus in order to add things, variables and strings? This is Java. In C++, C out. C out is the replacement of all of that. And then C out. And what I want to do is to send to the monitor. That is the final destination, the screen. And what I want to send is Hello. Hello. And then in Java, we do this plus to create one string in C. And you want to send by? One, two, three things. All of them to the screen. One string, one integer, another string. Can we do C out, hello, semicolon, C out, X, semicolon, C out, by, semicolon? Can we do this three? Yes. And can we do only one like this? Yes. This guy help us to connect different data types. Okay, this one is for sending things to the screen, right? It's like, I have my monitor and I want to send. Remember this arrow in C++ for the pointers? Well, they like the arrows. So now if I am doing this, monitor and the monitor is C out and I put these arrows and I put hello is like, well, I want to send hello to the monitor. So I want to show hello here. Now think about the opposite. I have my keyboard and I have a place in the memory that is a variable X and I want to move something from here to the variable. 
saying, saying the keyword. And you want to read something from the keyword, uh-huh. And where you want to put that one? In a variable, like in a variable X. This is the equivalent to your scanf, an instruction that is going to read something from the keyword and move that something to a variable. By the way, you do not need the ampersand. You need the name of the variable, the information is going to go to the variable. The system is going to take care of getting the address or whatever. C out, C in. Done. Going back to the example. Okay, so basically what you are showing me here is number one, you are using a library. The library that allow you to use this C out here and C in if you want to use that one also. Yep. Second, we need to talk more about this. For now, I am going to ask you just to put that the namespace. Uh, in particular, the full instruction is using namespace uh, standard STD. Uh, if you are working with a fancy IDE, Visual Studio, uh, this line is very important. If you do not put that line, you are going to need to add something to my C out, something. And you can match the idea of using namespace with the import packages in Java, in which if you import the package, you can use the name of the methods, the variables use the name. But if you do not do that, then you need to put the name of the package, the dot, the name of the class. So this without this line, with this line using namespace, and in this particular case, the standard namespace, you can just play with C out, C in without the need of adding this. Anyway, for now, you believe me. A class, Q, whatever, private variables, an integer. You already know the data types. The data types are the same as in C. I do not need to talk about data types in C. Protected. Did you notice this one? Int asterisk buffer. Asterisk. What is that? A pointer. Well, maybe it's going to be an array. Pointers, array. They are the same, right? Can you use pointers in C as a as an attribute in a class? Yeah. We are going to continue using that. A class, one variable private, three variables protected. One of those is a pointer, a pointer to integer. So far, good. Methods. My methods, public, is a good recommendation, abstraction encapsulation. How many methods do I have here? Hopefully you agree with me. Three methods. Notice the class is closing here and the semicolon. The class open there, the curly brackets inside for my methods. My methods, uh, what is this? Do you remember? Constructors. Constructors do not return a type. Constructor, they are not void. They do not have a type, and no, the, the file do not apply for them. It's not going to be integer by the file. Why? Because the name of the class, the name of the class. That one is a constructor, a method with the same name of the class. And the default data type is not going to apply to them. What is going to do this constructor? Uh, nothing really. Use print something on the screen. Another method, this one is void with a particular name with parameters. 
what are you going to do there? Nothing. You print something on the screen. And do you remember the backslash n and enter? I can print that. Another one. This one is supposed to return an integer. It's going to return a five always. Uh, this one is going to print something. Something that you are going to find in C++, in the books, in some internet web pages. Sometimes when you want to represent a method that that method do not receive any parameter. Parenthesis, void, parenthesis. Notice void is not the data type for any particular variable. There is no variable name. It's only void inside of the parenthesis. Uh, you are going to find this in some documents, again, some books, some web pages, some programs. Uh, it is not necessary. You can just have open parenthesis, closing parenthesis, done. That is not mandatory to have the void. The only thing that I want you to be aware is if you have a void inside of parentheses and look like we're it's just an explicit way to say that that method is not receiving any parameter. That's it. Put three methods, some variables, a class, done. Line number 20, I continue below. If you want to copy this in your compiler, the next column is below the first one. Main. In main, I can create an object. And do you remember that I have a constructor? What is happening there? I have the name of the class. I have the name of the object. And well, the constructor have a parameter. Usually what you will do is class object equal new, again, the name of the class. And then you put in parentheses the parameters, remember, in Java. Here, I do not want the, to use the new yet. We're going to use new later, dynamic memory. Right now, I want to create this object in the stack without using new, but I need to send a parameter. Parentheses, parentheses, whatever you put there, the parameters for the constructor. In this case, this five that I have here is a parameter and it's going to be sent to the constructor. And yes, here, you are calling the constructor for the class. You are calling a constructor without new. In fact, you are calling the constructor. You have the parameters for the constructor. And what you have before is the name of the object. You do not even have the name of the class that is the same name for the constructor. You don't have it. But here, you are calling the constructor. You will notice that in C++, in the same way that in C, the things are going to be short. Line 22 is creating an object, calling the constructor, and sending the number five as a parameter. Talking about new, a small problem, new, is going to be your replacement for malloc. Malloc only work with pointers. New only work with pointers. If you want to use new, and therefore you want an object in the heap, that is fine. You can use new. And use like in Java, new, the name of the class. And new, the name of the class, and parameter and the parameter is you like before the five but the new is going to return an address and because new return an address the same way time malloc you store that address in a pointer in a pointer to an object from the class so what you have is name of the class 
asterisk the name of the object. Well, the name of the pointer to the object. 22, 23, your two options for objects. Pointers to objects go to the heap or use objects, but they are going to be in the stack. We're going to work more with this new layer. For now, your two options. Now, moving forward, I have an object and I have a pointer. I can call methods. I can call the method like NQ, this method that I have here. Just like in Java, name of the object, dot, name of the method, and the parameters. Q1 and Q, Q1 and Q, two and eight, two calls to the method. Uh, this class is doing anything, but you can imagine that later we're going to transform this in a data structure. What is happening here? Wait, the arrow? The arrow was for strokes. Well, in fact, the arrow was for asterisk and the dot together. If I have Q2 and Q2 is a pointer, I can use asterisk Q2 and that is jumping to the object that I create. And then if I want to call a method, I can do something like this, right? I have a pointer to an object, the asterisk, and then dot, the name of the method, asterisk and dot together, I can apply the same thing that I apply in C, change these two for this. Something that you are going to have is every single time that you create an object with new, you have a pointer. When you want to access the method or the public variables, instead of the dot, you are going to have the arrow. Or you can use the asterisk and the dot. That usually do not happen. It's more simple and even elegant to use the arrow. Pointer to an object, arrow, the method, object, dot, the method, the two options that you are going to have. And that's it. If the method returns something, I can store that something. Use the same that you did with Java. Now, if you read this program, if you notice all the instructions here, uh, number one is a mixture, a mixture of C with Java. Well, not really, because the first language was C. From C, you create C++, and Java comes after C++. This one is not a mixture of C and Java. What happened is that Java removed a lot of things that you have in C++. Or Java add a lot of things like this idea of the main inside of the class, or like ignoring the pointers, like, okay, you're going to be able to do this because all objects are pointers, so you do not need the asterisk. Like in Java, every single time that you call a method from an object, really what you are doing is this, always. The dot that you have in Java is really an arrow because the object that you have in Java, all of them are pointers. All of them are with the new. Anyway, option number one. Option number two, to program with C, C++. You know what? You can put everything in one file, everything like this. Usually that one is not a good idea. Usually what we do when we do programming is to have different files, uh, different files. 
In Java, the rule is one file per class. C++ go further than that. In C++, something that you can do is for each class, you can have two files. One file CPP, that is the one that is going to have the code, the program, the instructions, and another file dot H that is going to have something like a list of content for your class. So the idea is that if someone need to know your class, that someone can just read the dot H file and that someone is going to know what your class have but do not need to read all the instructions inside of the methods, like the table of content in a book. I do not want all the information. I just want to know what is inside of this place. These two files together make or can make one class in C++. Now, it's optional. You can do as I did before, everything in one single place, Or your choice, you can go with the second idea. Two files per class. An example, you can have a file like time.h. The name could be whatever you want, but I am going to use the same as the class. Inside of this .h file, you can have something like this. And if you notice what I have is a class, closing the class, closing the semicolon. And inside, the only thing that I have is the variables, one line per variable. And I am going to have my methods. But the only thing that I put is the method, the data type, the name, and the parameters. Moreover, for the parameters, the only thing that I really need is the type of the parameter. So I can put int, comma, int, like I have two parameters int. You can put the names if you want. Optional. And then you finish that with semicolons. And this is a dot .h file. The header h header of my class abstraction yeah so i have this file it's a dot h and the only thing that i have here is the description of the class time the class time have these three methods and the constructor and these two variables period and i know the type of the data both for the attributes and for the parameters and even for the return of the methods that's it. That is a file dot h. Then I create a CPP. I need both. What I am going to put in the CPP, the most important thing, I need to connect the h with the CPP. How do I do that connection? with an include, an include of the H in the CPP with one particular and very important distinction. Quotation marks instead of angular brackets. Why? Because angular brackets for the libraries, for the dot H or whatever files that come from a library. Quotation marks for something that I am including that is mine, like the dot .h for this file, the table of content for this source code. EO stream, because I am going to use this say out and the name space. So I do not need to use here the name of the package and then the name of the C out. You'd like before with the include for the H file that I create before. 
And then the only thing that I put in this class is the body for my methods. I do not need to do anything regarding the variables. The variables are in the dot h. My methods, one, two, three, four methods, including the constructor. I am going to put here the body for the constructor, the body for the set time, the body for the other method. Wait, how do you know that these three methods are the same methods that you put here inside of the class? Because so far we talked that we can have methods outside of the classes, the class close here, right? And these are not inside of any class. How do you connect these bodies with the class that you create in a different file? Well, you're going to do that with our friend, the colon colon, the scope resolution operator. Scope resolution operator, scope resolution operator, scope resolution operator. And before the name of the method, you are going to put the name of the class. Name of the class, scope resolution operator, and then the name of the method. What you are telling the compiler is, compiler, these methods belong to the class time. That class time is defined in another file and they are the bodies for the methods that I put there. So the body for my constructor, the body for whatever this method is doing or this method is doing. 1.h, 1.cpp. By the way, the CPP, the time CPP do not have the main. Where is the main? Two options. The main can be in the same file. This is my second part of this one, 14, 15. This print standard is also part of the class. And you can notice that the main, the main is not using the scope resolution operator. The main do not belong to the class. The main can use the class, can call methods, and can print things. Can I put the main in another file? And the answer is yes. You can create a project. You can have time.h, time.cpp, and you can have another file like main cpp. This file can have your method main. This file can have your class. And this file can have all the methods, the body for the methods that belong to the class. What do I need to do in this file main in order to use the class time? Include, include what? Time, quotation, yes, because it's your file, is not from the libraries. the dot h. Do I need to include that CPP? No, nope. the compiler is going to do that for you. The only thing that you include, the table of content, the header, that's it. These two, create a class, the header and the bodies. This one, you remain in a separate file or you can put all of these together, your choice. C++, both options work 
both options are correct. Both options can compile. Good. Another example from a scratch. Tell me, uh, we have this program in which what I want to do is to create an object from a class student. This student have an ID that is an integer. And the student have a grade that is an integer. And I want to create this object. This one is uh, the student X. I want to create the class. I want to create the object. Moreover, I want to put as an ID here, one as a grade 100. What do I need to do in order to program this? Well, uh, could you agree with me that step number one, probably what I need is I am going to use a library and that library is going to be your stream. I am talking about asking for values and I am talking maybe about printing something. Uh, second, I am going to use only one file to make this easy and quickly. I need a class. My class is going to be student. Uh, variables, I need variables. Uh, probably could be a good idea to make those variables private. The variables, integers, ID, and grade. They are private. So maybe I need some public method. Public, uh, maybe a constructor here. A constructor that is going to receive the values for the variables. And I can put the constructor, use the signature here and the body in a different file, but used to save time, I am going to put everything there. And it's like, well, ID is going to be equal to A and grade is going to be equal to B. That is something that you will do with Java. Something else that I need? Not really. Don't win my class. Important to remember, semicolon, my class is done. Now I need a main method here. I need a program. I need an object. Uh, I have two options. I can create my student like this, student X, but I need to call the constructor. Your object, you're calling the constructor and you're sending parameters, the one and the 100. Mm, okay, but that object is going to be in the stack. What if I want the object in the heap? Well, a second option is to use pointers. If I use pointers, I can use the new. If I use the new and without details, could be something like this. Now, if I want to use X or if I want to use Y for using X dot, and I can put here whatever method is available for Y, the arrow, and I can put here whatever method is available. And my program should be something like this. Objects with pointers, objects without pointers, one class, 
in one file. Okay, wait. Another option is like, I don't like the idea of having everything used like this in one file. Okay, your second option. You can create a file student.h and you can create another file student.cpp. Obviously two files in the same project. You have an IDE, you create these two files. And you know what? In student age, you can put here your class. Student. Just like before, you can put here private. Now with the column, you can have here the grade. You can have here the ID. And then you go with the public things. And with the public, well, the constructor and the constructor receive two integers. Again, I can put the name of the variables or use integer comma integer, int, int, that's it. And I finish the method with a semicolon. If I want more method, the type, the name, the parameters, the semicolon, always. That's it, my .h file. In my CPP, in the CPP, well, I need to connect these two files. The first thing that I need to do is I include, I include quotation marks, quotation marks, the name of the file. Very, very important. What you need to put here is the name of the file. It doesn't matter what is the name of the class. The important thing is the name of the file and they can be different. Obviously my recommendation is use the same. They include, and then variables. You don't care about the variables here. You have them in the class. The only thing here is the body for the method. The body for the method, like student, now here, you care about the name of the parameters. I need names here because I am going to use curly brackets. But moreover, in order to tell the computer that this one belong to a class, scope resolution operator. Scope resolution operator, the name of the class. So you're going to identify a constructor because that one is class scope resolution, class name again. And here inside, you put the body. The body, for instance, grade equal A or ID equal B or the opposite. You have access to these variables because they are in the class and you are in the class also. And these, these are the parameters. Two files, solution in blue, solution in red with one file. In both cases, you are working with classes. In both cases, you are creating objects and using the objects. That's it. Any question? Yes, you can put getters and setters. Uh, I didn't put them here, but the next step here could be like, okay, I need, for instance, a method int get grade. Uh, nothing here. And then here, student, scope resolution operator. Obviously, this one have to return an integer, get grade, no parameters, and inside, return grade, and so on. Getter setters uh, to a string methods equals another methods that you learn in Java. We're going to need it here also. We're going to make some examples later. It's very good question. What happens if I decide here that I want another file and my other file is like main.cpp and I want to use the class, right? Because I basically want to move all the main 
here, the one that you include always, always, always is the dot H. So here, my class is a student, so. Never, never, never include a dot CPP. You can do it. It's not something that you should do. The inclusion of the CPP is the linking process that happened later in the compiler. So for your source code, always, always, always dot H. If you have the main here, if I am going to use the main and inside of the main, I am going to create an object like a student object here, W. This one is going to work having this include. That is the only thing that you need to do. The connection between the include and the bodies is something that is going to happen in your project. Something that the compiler is going to do, you do not need to worry about it. You only link the include for the header. Good? Okay, guys, so see you next lecture. Next one, your exam. I see you next week. Good luck.